Hello, we're going to look now at the timesheet report template at SharePoint dashboards.com. As you can see in this preview window, this is a simple and easy to use timesheet report grid where any user can make line item entries to indicate the amount of hours they're spending on various tasks throughout their work week. This is a template which you can apply onto a SharePoint list. What we're going to do is walk through all the steps on the setup and then we're going to show how you use this. This template does require downloading a SharePoint list template file. This is an STP file and you should begin with that step. So just click where it says list template download required report. Click on that. It will download an STP file to your local computer. And we will be loading this into SharePoint. If you've not done this before, I recommend that you click on the link that says manage list templates and it will walk you through that process. So I'm going to switch over to SharePoint and you need to go to your root of your site collection and then you can go to site settings then go to web designer galleries and list templates if you don't see this please look at the help section on the uh, link that I just mentioned okay so we're gonna load our list template so click on files then upload document and I'm gonna browse to my local computer and I have my report template. I renamed it. Uh, you can rename it if you want to. That's up to you. I already had one in there, so I'm loading that. Yours will say report.stp and hit OK. You'll get another dialog window, and um, I usually just like to make these match. That's it. You'll see it load on the screen, then you can exit. Now this list template's available for me to use inside of SharePoint. So I'm gonna to go to my site where I wanna use this. I'm gonna to go to site contents. And in order to load a list template, I do need to return to classic SharePoint view. So that's in the lower left corner. And that will change your display and this will look like old SharePoint. And that is the way to load a list template. Click Add an App. And then if you scroll through all these options, you should see your new list template at the end. So here is the list template I loaded. It's called Report Timesheets. So that is the template. And then you can name the actual list, whatever you want. So I'm just going to put uh, Time Tracking. Click Create. That's all there is to it for that step. Once you've done that, you don't need to be in the classic SharePoint view, so you can just click Exit Class Experience all the way in the lower left corner, and we can stay in modern SharePoint at this point. So I'm going to go to my new list, which is called Time Tracking. There it is. <clears throat> We're ready to apply a template. Now before we do that, I'm going to just make a new SharePoint record. So we'll say put my name at the top and then we need to start an end date. So we'll say this is from April 30th to May 6th and that's all we need. I've got a dummy record in there. We already have a view here called timesheet. I'm going to apply my formatting template onto that. Now in SharePoint, you, or in SharePoint dashboard site, you're going to see some different theme options. You can, of course, adjust um, your color backgrounds, your font size, font family. All of those are configurable, so you can make those adjustments to get your preferred look and feel. I'm going to stick with the theme one default option, and I'm going to copy the template. I just need to follow the directions in the pop-up window and then come back over to SharePoint, go to the View Selector, Format Current View, Advanced, Select All, Paste, and Save. There we go. There's my new timesheet. 
and I'll just demonstrate all the various functionality. First of all, you can expand and collapse down your timesheets. So if you have employees, multiple employees doing timesheets, that'll help it um, stay condensed for you. And then you simply put in your date. So when you click on the fields, you can uh, make entries. So there's my date picker, and then you'll see it's uh, highlighted with the background color after I fill that in. Put four hours and then I can type a category, um, development, and then my description, whoops. List, template, building, there we go. There we've got my first row. Now notice at the bottom, it's giving me a roll up total and a progress bar to show um, you know what I have in there and I'll go ahead and do my next one put eight say training all day training okay and you can see the, uh, the hours total rolled up another option you have you can copy if you hit the first button to the right side of the road it'll just make a copy of that entry down below that might speed up the work if you've got lots of similar entries to do. If you want to get rid of one of those, you can just click on the X and that will clear out that row for you. Now by default, it's going to show 15 rows, but you can change that. It can show as many as 30. Um, that's adjustable by the user at any time. And then if I want to collapse that back down, I can say, I just need to see 10 right now. So just by clicking in that box in the lower right. The name can be adjusted up here. Um, you can change that to a different name. So I can change it to a different name. The dates are configurable. Maybe I want to adjust that and say, actually, it's starting on May 1. And I'm going to have it go to May 7. Um, and then the status is adjustable. Okay, so now that's in progress. When I'm all done, I can do complete. So I don't ever have to go to that side panel form. I can make all of my adjustments directly in the timesheet. So that's everything you need to know about using this functionality. Anytime you need to do a new timesheet, you simply need to enter the name of the person and put in the start and end date and that's all that there is to it. So there's another timesheet below. Now you can see why the collapse functionality can be handy because um, we can keep those all um, collapsed down when we start to have lots of timesheets. Another thing I should mention is the category. That is going to be a text box by default. You may want to change that to a choice option if you want to restrict what goes into that box. And if you do, it's a relatively easy adjustment. If you go into the list settings, you can go to the fields for category. Now what you're going to notice is there's lots of fields in this list. In general, the way that it works, there are copies of each type of field for each of the possible 30 rows. Normally you have to make no adjustments here. If you want your category to be using selected options, the way that you would go about doing that is change each of those category fields to choice and then you would set your options down here. Um, you can type in your options demonstrating and then once you have the options you want you can copy and paste if you hit OK you can change all of those fields over to choice fields and that will update your interface to show a drop-down selector for that column the other thing that you may want to update is status and the status is already a choice field your default options are not started in progress complete. 
if you want to use different status options, you absolutely can do that. You can simply change the options in that one field. Now in that case, what you should do is go back to the SharePoint dashboards template. You should clear out these values and then add with the corresponding color backgrounds to match up with your new choice selections. Then you can copy the template and reapply. Notice that you can adjust the width of the overall timesheet and then I can make adjustments for the columns. If you want to make any tweaks depending on your font size, you can um, adjust the columns in the grid. So you just go to these column width settings and that will make corresponding adjustments for you. Depending on your data, depending on your font size and other settings, you may prefer to make some minor adjustments on those settings. So there you have it. That's everything that you need to know to be able to set up your own timesheet system using this custom template from SharePointDashboards.com. If you do not yet have access to the site, you can go to sign up for 20 free templates and then go on to use the subscription if you like those and want to have access to the full site. This is the 140th template added to the site, so there's quite a lot of different options. Also, there are other reporting options um, available as well. I hope you like that, and I hope you soon have your own timesheet system set up using this template from SharePointDashboards.com. Thank you.